Blade Breaker is the follow-up to the New York Times bestselling book, Realm Breaker. Author Victoria Aviard here is to chat all about it. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. So not only is the book released, congratulations on that, but you're also going to be in the Chicagoland area on Thursday, teaming up with Anderson's Bookshop. Yes, I'm so excited to come back to Chicago. I've been there in a couple of book tours and it's, it feels like a celebration to return and kind of be out on the road again and get to meet readers again. We haven't been able to do this in two and a half years. Oh, exactly. So I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about Realm Breaker. Uh, fans of the first book uh, got to ha experience it last year. And then thank you for not making the fans wait too long uh, for the follow-up <laughs> onto the book. No, I'm a greedy reader myself, so I want to get it out there. Uh, th let's talk a little bit about Blade Breaker. What's the story all about? Yeah, so the whole Realm Breaker series, I like to pitch it as Guardians of the Galaxy meets Lord of the Rings. It's set in that sort of classic high fantasy adventure, but it's a little more fun, um, a little more lighthearted. Uh, it's sort of the classic fantasy heroes have set out to save the world and failed. They're all gone, but the world still needs to be saved. So I always had this question of like, well, who's the B team of saving the world? Who are the not so good guys? guys who are going to have to band together and that's what the whole series is about is the not so typical heroes who want to survive so they're going to have to save the world themselves and uh, I had a really fun time with this I was definitely a teenager who grew up loving Lord of the Rings but not exactly seeing myself in it so this series was my way to sort of communicate with that. I think also, you know, with with the Red Queen series and then with this series as well, too, there's lots of people who did not see themselves who are able to see themselves in, in these two series of books. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the fan reaction that you've gotten to that. One thing that I hear a lot from my readers that's really, really flattering is um, I didn't think I was a fantasy reader and then I read your books. And I find that so cool to be sort of accessible fantasy. I work really hard to make sure I'm not overwhelming my readers, but also taking them on a really immersive journey. I like to say that I trick them into reading these books. Uh, so it, it's nice these kind of form a gateway for readers to sink into the fantasy genre and maybe try something they didn't think they'd like, because I think people have a lot of preconceived notions about fantasy, about it being too dry or too difficult or too complex or whatever. And there's so many books out there that if you just give them a chance, you're going to love it. Oh, exactly. 100%. Let's talk a little bit about the event on, on Thursday. So you're going to be uh, talking about the book. There's going to be pre-signed copies of the book as well, too. You know, what's that feeling that you have, especially, you know, not doing events virtually, but getting to be able to do them yeah. in, uh, in person? It's, it's going to be so great. I can't wait. My first event is tonight. Um, writing is a really solitary endeavor. You know, you're just in your little office typing away like a mole creature. And you kind of forget that you're writing for other people because it's unbelievable in the first place that someone's reading your book. Um, but to get to go out on the road and connect and physically see people holding your book and be excited to read it, it it's one big party. And it just feels like you're connecting with people on a level you didn't know you could. Uh, and for the last two years, we haven't really gotten to do that. We've had our virtual events, but it's not the same. Um, so it's going to be really fun to just all be there together and celebrate. I had read that the Red Queen series was inspired after you had graduated and kind of student debt kind of le leaning over you. Uh, talk a little bit about yeah. that inspiration and what inspired this new series. Yeah, so I was coming to the end of um, my film school education. <laughs> I went to USC to study screenwriting. And I was about to graduate into a recession with a ton of film school loans and no job prospects. And that was really, really scary. But I had an idea for a young adult novel and I ended up saying, I'm gonna go home and write this book and I'm gonna give it all I've got. So my parents were kind enough to be like, you can move home. You don't have to like find a secondary job and live in LA. Uh, so I went back to my small town and over the next six or seven months, I wrote the first draft of Red Queen. Uh, and I did not know if it was going to go anywhere, but luckily I had a manager in Los Angeles who was still working with me and he passed my manuscript on to a literary agency. And they were like, okay, this, this shows promise. Let's do some edits. Let's see if we can work together. And the ball really got rolling there. And now it's been four books in on that series. It's done and dusted and it's still finding readers, which is really, really cool to see, especially because of TikTok. Red Queen is one of those books that has benefited immensely from some great word of mouth. Uh, well, one more question about uh, Red Queen. We heard last year that Elizabeth Banks was going to be directing and starring in the series for, for Peacock. Um, I haven't heard that anything lately. You know, Tell me a little bit, is there an update on uh, the series and when we might be able to see it? 
Yeah, there's there's so many updates and so many things I can't say. I can say that I've been really involved in the process and the wheels are still turning and we're in a very good position. But uh, unfortunately on the entertainment side of things, you really can't say anything until suddenly you can say everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll be wait, waiting for that one as well too. You just post on Instagram, uh, you with a, a fancy white dress on and a crowd doing a, a, a fun video. Do you have a whole closet mm -hmm. full of like fun costumes that give you inspiration <laughs> or, or tell me a little bit about that outfit? Oh God, that, um, that I was asked to do and I had to scramble really, really hard. And I'm really glad I had lots of different headbands that I could pretend were crowned. I generally don't like to dress up as my characters or do any kind of cosplay, but that was still really fun to kind of go back to when you were a little kid and look in your closet and say, what can I turn into something that looks a little bit more fantastical than what it actually is. <laughs> and, and the final thing here, I wanted to go ahead and, uh, and just chat about, um, as far as readers, you know, you had said that some people didn't think that um, these fantasy books were, were for them, or people maybe don't identify with the heroes of, of a book. You know, what does it feel like as you step back and get to see readers maybe chatting before and after, um, you know, one of your book events or people online, you know, having conversations as far as what this means to them and not necessarily knowing the impact that you were going to have? It's really cool. I mean, I'm a writer. I shouldn't be at a loss for words, but it is constantly the coolest thing to see other people want to sort of play in my sandbox that I have made. Um, I was a big fan fiction writer growing up. That was my first foray into like writing for my peers and to see fan fiction pop up for my work. It's been the weirdest 360 degree journey. And probably it's so amazing and so rewarding as well, too. Victoria, thank you so much for your time today. Blade Breaker in stores now. And also, she's going to be uh, with Anderson's Bookshop uh, this upcoming Thursday at an offsite event. But you got to buy tickets ahead of time at andersonsbookshop.com. Go ahead and get one of those pre signed copies and get to hear her talk a little bit about the book. And uh, welcome back to the Chicagoland area. Thank you so much. So glad to be back. Of course. We'll see you Thursday. Bye. Bye bye.